Hey, how's it going, guys? Got another backpack review for you. Um, but first, I'm going to ramble on for a couple of minutes, so uh, bear with me here. Um, I just got back from Thailand a couple of days ago and uh, got a few extra backpacks. So uh, while I was there, anybody who has been to Asia will tell you that it is a great place to buy counterfeit goods. Um, if you go there, you'll see bootleg CDs and DVDs, fake handbags by Gucci, um, imitation copies of like designer clothing, even perfume and cologne you can get there. And another big market is fake backpacks. Uh, a lot of people end up going to Asia and buying, you know, if they don't have a day pack already, they'll end up going to one of the stalls that you'll find in Bangkok or Hanoi or somewhere in Cambodia or somewhere in China and buying like a fake backpack. Uh, the reason for that is uh, a lot of uh, backpack companies, what they do is they farm out their construction to Asian companies. Um, so I'm going to go into a, a little aside story. I actually have to go to a couple of weddings this summer. So while I was in Bangkok, I went to a tailor and I had him fit me for a tuxedo. And while I was there, I was looking at the prices and although not cheap, it was a lot less than getting a suit done here. And I asked him why the prices were so low. And matter of factly, he told me that in Asia, materials are expensive, but labor is cheap, which is why so many of the things that you have, when you look on the construction tag, it says made in China or made in Taiwan or the Philippines. And so, for example, he was telling me Hugo Boss, whose suits I really in enjoy their designs, what they'll do is they'll take Italian fabrics and silks, ship them to China, have them fitted, measured, cut, and assembled in China, and then the suits will be shipped back to Italy, and then they'll sell them there for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And that happens for a lot of goods here. Um, as an example, let me get this counterfeit bag out of the way. Show you. This North Face Solaris, which I reviewed earlier. Uh, North Face is an American company uh, based in uh, my neighborhood, San Francisco. Uh, this bag was made in Vietnam. Uh, also, Kelty Red Wing. Um, Kelty, also an American company. This bag was made in the Philippines. REI Lookout. Uh, I haven't reviewed this bag yet. I'll do a review later on. Um, the REI Lookout. REI, an American company. This bag was made in China. So um, it's really common to see goods that are made outside of the States. And that doesn't really bother me. As long as the construction is good and the, the item has quality construction, I mean, as long as it does what it needs to do, that's great. So anyways, uh, I'm gonna. this is probably going to be multiple parts. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, how to spot fake construction or poor construction in a backpack compared to the legitimate article. And then I'll review this bag, the bag itself, uh, this particular one that I have. So uh, let's start. So the story behind this bag was I was just walking around and I already have a ton of backpacks, but uh, I saw this bag and it had the Daughter logo on it. And I asked the guy how much it was and I bargained down and you can get this bag for about 25 bucks in Asia. And uh, I was surprised because Deuter um, although not cheap, I think they're one of the companies that give you the best value of features versus how much you pay. And 25 bucks, that's really cheap. So I bought this bag, and then I got home, and then I found out that one of the zippers was broken. So, you know, one thing you'll learn if you buy anything in Asia is once they get your money, you're not going to get your money back. The best you can hope for is to trade it in for a different item. So I brought the bag back, and uh, he gave me a new one. And then that bag, one of the clips broke. And then this second clip on it was so soft that I could break it by hand. It actually cracked on me. I came back, really upset. He gave me yet another bag. He said he'll just keep doing that. I just wouldn't get my money back. So uh, if you're going to buy like, any type of bag in Asia, um, I highly recommend before you hand your money over, look over the bag. Check all the zippers. Check all the straps. Uh, look for any holes or wear spots in the material. Go over it really carefully. Um, check the clasps. Make sure that they uh, clasp securely and that the uh, they're not worn down or cracked or stressed out or anything like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I have what's called here the Deuter Serratore 40, and uh, I don't have a comparable size Deuter. I mean, probably the closest analog would be the Deuter Futura 28, which uh, I don't have. So I'm going to compare it to the Deuter Futura 42, which I have. So it won't be an exact comparison, but at least I'll be able to compare some of the features that you'll see. So uh, let's get started. So we'll put the general article here on the side. 
and we'll go over how to spot a fake. Um, it's going to be pretty subtle, and especially if the bag does its job, you're not really going to think that anything's wrong with it. Uh, the easiest way to tell is to go on the website and look up the model. And if the model isn't on the website, it's probably a fake. In fact, while I was in Asia, I saw designs that I knew for a fact to be by North Face, but it would have the low Alpine logo on it, or the Deuter logo on it. Or I would see designs that I knew to be by Deuter, and it would have the North Face logo on it. Because counterfeiters don't care. They know that you're going to only see the label. They know most people don't follow uh, the different models and makes of backpacks. They just know that people will think that they can get a name brand backpack for a really cheap price. So. If you want to do your homework, I mean, go ahead, go online, check out the company website, and see if the model that you have is on for sale. And even then, it might be a counterfeit, but that's probably the best way to eliminate 90% of the models that you're going to see on the shelves. Um, again, uh, check all of the construction. The reason that these companies can make uh, the backpacks in other in like Asia, and then they're still good quality. Is because they have quality control. Nothing leaves those factories and gets shipped to the states unless it passes a quality control test. They don't have that for counterfeits. Um, basically, what it is is just make them, knock them out, put them on the market, get people to buy them. That's it. You're not going to have somebody standing over to make sure all the zips and straps and clasps like work and function perfectly. So I had to go through two lemon bags before I got this one, which works fine. So uh, that's why you have to check it out yourself. Test everything before you hand over your money. Zippers, again, clasps, again, wear spots, really important. Make sure that it has the features that you want, because you're not going to be able to change your mind and refund it like you can back in the States. Um, little things you'll see, like, uh, for example, the stitching here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's not quite even. Sorry, I'm using a digital camera camera, so you're not going to be able to see. But there are little uh, errors, like little line errors on the uh, the stitching. Um, the fact that the name, Serratore 40, usually the number that you'll see in a backpack name indicates either how much space it holds in liters or um, cubic inches. So the Futura 42 holds 42 liters. The Red Wing 2900 is 2900 cubic inches. Um, this is most definitely not a 40 liter pack. This is probably maybe 25. Um, so yeah, again, uh, the makers of these counterfeit bags don't really care. Other things you'll see is like little part things about the fit and finish. For example, they've sewed on this label, and probably can't see. If you can see this little white edge on the other outside of the stitching, that means they probably uh, created the label, pulled it off of the off of the uh, the mold, and then just sewed it right in with a, with all these little extra pieces of plastic still hanging out around the edge. In addition to that, if you look at the class, for example. Uh, let's see if I can find it right here. This little buckle right here, it's really small to tell, but uh, these pieces are injection molded plastic, so they'll inject the plastic into the mold and once it dries, they'll, they'll snap it off. There'll be little corners and sharp pieces of plastic sticking out from these uh, clasps that you'll often see on counterfeit bags. I'm not saying you won't see them on legit bags, but they're more likely to occur when you look at the counterfeits as well. Uh, again, with the fit and finish, for things like the clasps here, if you'll notice, it still buckles, and I made sure to check and make sure everything was strong. But there's just some intangible quality about how things just function in a counterfeit bag versus the legitimate article. Things just work more smoothly and more crisply with the legit bag. For this, it's kind of like it clasps and it works just fine, but uh, there's a softness to it when you hook in a clasp versus the legit article. Let me see if I can get this. For the Futura, I don't know, uh, you probably can't hear it, but you can feel it. Everything locks in a lot more crisply and like securely. It just, there's a definite feeling of a click when you do a class. Same thing works with the zippers. The zippers on the legitimate article for the Dora de Futura, it's very definite uh, versus the counterfeit model, which is a bit softer. Still works fine, but you have to drag it out a little bit more. Also, for the legitimate article for quality name brand makers, um, I'm going to talk about zippers really quick. Um, YKK is usually the brand of zippers used by professional um, backpack companies just because like they're known for making quality zippers. You're not going to find YKK zippers 
on the counterfeits just because it's expensive. Oh, I'm out of time already. Uh, I'll continue on a part two.